Hello hero, it's Lucy Lanorn. It's good to see you. You've seen the title, so at this stage you know more about today's reading than I do, since I speak to you from the recent alternate past. This is a general, timeless one, ideally designed for quite a large audience, so we won't get as specific as we would in a private booking, link down below. If most of what I'm saying feels like an answer to a question you've been living, take those tidbits with you and let a fellow traveller excavate the rest. If it's not your reading, there are playlists on my channel hub to randomise finding something else. Whilst it's true that a broken clock is right twice a day, I'm not sure that same clock is right ten times within the hour. So trust yourself, above all, to know what's useful for you and what makes you feel more empowered for hearing it, no matter what your beliefs. While we're on beliefs, on this channel gendered terms are just a specificity of language to describe energetic tendencies and signatures, solar or lunar inclination in accordance with a hermetic law of polarity, and not any kind of socialisation to buy into wholesale or conflate with the identity or orientation of anyone described. Romantic and spiritual labels used are plucked from lengthy precedent, predating any unfortunate trending controversies or engineered cyclical backlash. My dude, around these parts, we don't relinquish the complexity of our full histories. We trust ourselves cognitively to adapt what we consume and see what's healthy and long-term accurate. I'm legally obliged to say this is entertainment, in quote marks, and that I'm an occultist not qualified in unrelated disciplines to advise on physical and mental health, finances, legalities. You get the picture. You're in charge of you. All my readings are protected and warded by frankly magnificent beneficial forces, though I don't share my custom prep rituals on camera any more than I give out my address. I hope the reasoning behind that is obvious, but you can trust there are zero parasitic or adversarial influences permitted within a hundred unseen paces of any signal we patch from the noise here today. So sit back, relax into the shape of your most luminous possible future self, cosy up to imaginal allies, and take in whatever it is you need to hear. If you do like it, this small channel with a big mission very much appreciates subscriptions, thoughtful comments, or donations in order to spread the word and keep the lights on. Now, let's tune that dial. Right, first things first, thank you to my donators and my new subscribers. I appreciate all of you. I see you um, and you really are helping the channel to grow, expand and helping me to make rent. So, yeah, wicked. Thank you. <laughs> um, the next thing is that this is probably going to be a family related love reading or at least something about the approval of a lineage um ancestral or current on taking something forward so if it doesn't quite hit to have a love reading with this um I, I imagine for most of you it is love reading but just read it as something you would love to happen that is blocked in the ways that we're going to discuss i feel that way because um firstly to spoil the sort of extra portion at the end of the reading the stuff that I had planned today was ancestral bibliomancy. So we've done bibliomancy as our spicy extra in the last couple of weeks, but we haven't done kind of heirloom objects, sentimental items, etc. So I want to do a bit of both combined today with a bit of an ancestral offering as well. Um, highly protected and warded for those who didn't watch the intro, just, just in case. Um, so there's that weighing in, but also we got a rose quartz, which is usually a very kind of loving spirit based energy from, uh, well, it's a, it's a love that's not necessarily from the earthly plane. So that can be mighty dead and things like that. And then we've got red shade as our main color, which speaks to me of blood, partly because just before this reading, I was thinking of other divination methods to do. And one that came up is a blood in water reading. So hit me up if you would be interested in that in the next few weeks. I probably will go ahead and do it. Um, although obviously it will carry disclaimers when I do. But blood is, again, lineage and legacy. And I'm using my, again, mispronounced VAV Marseille deck today. Um, which you can find in my A to Z Lucky Dip playlist where we do like for each reading we do three piles or six piles depending on how far it is and we pick a letter of the alphabet, we pick a word out of that letter. You can add to the Lucky Dip of what word we're going to get and then we do a mini reading on that word. I say mini, they're about half an hour. <laughs> so if you haven't 
looked at that playlist, there may be something further in there that expands upon this in that A to Z lucky dip thing, just because I don't usually use this deck for my straightforward readings. But again, this is one of the oldest tarot decks in existence. Um, it was a kind of mirror image of the proper Marseille deck that was made illegally um, by one of the printers that was making the original. Um, so it's got that trickster vibe to it and there's some interesting reversals of stuff. But also, it is very much about history, right? Ancestry again. So moving on to the actual reading, um, in our red hand Lenormand, we've got an anchor and a rose. And rather than reading these as playing cards just for today, I am seeing um, the potential of a love situation or a romantic offering where you feel anchored to something different, right? Um, rose, anchor. And then we've got love in reverse or Venus in reverse, the inversion of the four for our Black Moon astrology cards. So again, it's this theme of thwarted love or love in retrograde or under examination. Um, a four in reverse as well speaks of something that could or should be stable and isn't. Now you do you as to whether that's a description of a relationship or the description of the family unit weighing in on it. Um, and sort of in relation to it there is perhaps a feeling here that you could build something more stable than your existing familial setup a kind of chosen family tribe scenario um but that you're prevented from doing that because of the way that your family background is your tradition is and if you don't have ancestors weighing in or you have a really problematic family background that's kind of what I mean too, right? For those of you who are adopted or had really troubled childhoods or anything like that, all of that is going to weigh in in a slightly different way to the way that you conduct yourself in relationships, how safe you feel, um, what you consider to be red flags within the other person. So I'm speaking to a majority in terms of, you know, broad general reading, who are probably having relatives directly weighing in at a conscious kind of on earth level right now. But if your family setup is just not like that or you're reading it differently, then perhaps the familial thing in the way here could be the influence of the idea of family to a certain thing and how that's kind of held you back. We've got this day I am allowing myself a daydream, which we've had before quite recently, I think. Um, and that speaks to me of whether it is that you feel permitted to dream of the things that you desire. So in this case, for many, read a relationship. But again, it can be a project. It can be a collaboration, a move. You do you. Um, and then we've got my family would never be OK with this. And this is the best connection I've ever been in. So again, <laughs> you know, the themes are very obvious today. We've got a reinforcement of that. There's something fantastic going on here, be it a partnership or something else but you know that the family or the family setup would be in the way. I was asked today to pull just four of the tarot and kind of keep going, keep pulling as we go. I've got an eye on the time in terms of that because my readings have been very long recently anyway, so I do apologise. Um, but they vary and I, I read what I need to read, you know, you, you get the info you're meant to get. So, okay, let's have a look at this properly. If you were here for the, I think the last reading to this one, depending on when I upload, um, that was about somebody doing detective work, you may have identified as the party who's not doing that, but is receiving that um, and is having a little bit of stalker energy around you, because that's what I'm getting from this first card straight off. Um, then we have the uh, two, four, six, eight, ten of pentacles. Sorry, this deck is a little awkward to read. Um which again, legacy, but because of the way that this card is drawn, I'm reading that as in a reversal. So we have somebody spying that is, um, <clears throat> excuse me, one of these days my voice will break, sorry. We have someone spying, perhaps nervously because of that vocal adjustment, who either sees you as someone incapable of having a real legacy, proper legacy, etc. Don't shoot the messenger, this is their perspective. Or someone who wants to actively prevent you having a legacy 
because they feel that things should be carried on in a certain way. And they were perhaps on your socials or blowing up your phone or something like that. And this is in the inverse because you've stopped that situation, right? You've blocked them on Facebook. You've made your Insta private. You've um, adjusted your call settings, all that sort of good stuff. So there's been a boundary drawn here with someone that's a nosy Parker. But it's someone also that you feel anchored enough to that you can't really tell them to fuck off. <laughs> And if you're new to the channel, I do swear. Sorry about it, but, it, you know, it's. I don't feel that it inhibits my ability to communicate effectively. If you feel differently to that, you know where to go, right? Um, you know, benevolently. Um, I'm not telling you, like, where to go. I'm just saying this may not be your channel. Um, okay, then we have a Ace of Cups in reverse, but it's interesting that this is, like, the house, the home card, you know? In the upright, this would be very much, like the setup of the palace where the king and queen or king and king or queen and queen or other would be at the happy ending to the movie sort of ready to start their own ten of pentacles to go into the next phase of the cycle this is a reference to the physical location of where legacy would happen and in this case you can see it's reversed so again we've got this thing of either somebody has the opinion that you wouldn't be able to make a good household you wouldn't be able to uh, finance a home or take care of a whole family unit within a place or there is an active thwarting from perhaps a family member or a group of family to you achieving, for instance, uh, purchasing your own home or moving out of the familial home or something along those lines in order that you can establish yourself with your chosen person or people in living your best romantic or kind of altogether joining hands life, right? Because I'm also aware that there is an asexual component to this collective, so it may be kind of chosen family in the Ohana, Lilo and Stitch sense, and not necessarily family family, but for many of you, it's the prevention of something like a marriage, or if you're getting married, um, it's maybe somebody dragging their feet with something technical that would prevent you getting a house, or someone thwarting a job opportunity that might then prevent your application for a mortgage, or someone borrowing money extensively or making you feel guilt about money that prevents you switching up a rental in order to move in with somebody. You get the gist, right? Again, reading for a large audience here, but it seems to be something like that. And if this is really non-love, but it's talking about the things you love, your daydreams, your passion, the things that you feel you want to offer this bouquet of roses that you feel anchored to in a sort of uh, judgment card sense, right? A calling. Then this is somebody actively sabotaging your ability to relocate for that or follow that up in a slightly different location or work for a company that are like a 12th house in institution type setup. So again, confirmation in the comments if any of this is hitting, but I'm reading for slightly different situations here, so please do bear with. Then we have the two of pentacles in reverse. So the accusation here about not being able to do this legacy, it does relate again to recent readings because there's this almost kind of millennial doomed generation thing of um, can you organise your own affairs? Can you handle your own stuff? You may have been drawn to my reading about a certain being that wants you to be taking care of them in the here and now. Perhaps you're a new parent, etc. That one might be relevant for that. But certainly within that reading, whether or not that resonates with your situation, we had again this vibe coming in of somebody from the outside saying that you don't take care of business purely because you don't take care of it their particular way. And again, highly recommend going to the A to Z uh, shuffle of my channel to see whether you get the familial reading I did I think maybe as part of Utober as well where again there was this family dynamic of somebody like trying to tell you how to live based on how they lived but when they weren't in the same setup as you in terms of country in terms of family setup in terms of support in terms of money you name it so basically we've got a nosy parker um whether or not they've expressed from what they see as a logical perspective their 
condemnation of your attempts to further or have a relationship. They've certainly expressed disappointment in the way that you handle your affairs and perhaps a disillusionment with the idea that um, you might want to move on or move forward or physically move, right? Maybe you have moved and they sort of tried to sabotage it and now that you're gone, they are making you feel feelings of guilt or um, making you feel less than capable in order to assert that it was always a bad idea anyway, in their opinion, because you can't juggle things. But actually, I think moving is a huge deal. It's a big transition. If you did move and you found it difficult, I mean, from experience in recent years, it is difficult, right? That's normal. Everyone experiences that. So don't let this knobhead weigh in too hard, right? Any gender? <laughs> okay, I'm going to sit on the floor because we need to ground this. I apologise to the plants that I just knocked slightly. Um, sorry, you can't see that, so it means nothing to you, but I do like to say sorry if I judge them too hard. Um, okay, so, okay, we're getting more information, but I didn't ask a question, so... Right, this could be somebody very fire dominant or somebody quite feisty, maybe a femme or a woman. Um, that's just extra confirmation for some of you, but it's kind of like they're coming over in their mind as an intellectual. They're coming over in their mind as coming from a logical place. But the way that this enacts itself kind of in the world, especially with all this red, is in this feisty, fiery, bossy um kind of grandiose i lay down the law and this is how it is vibe the kind of shadow of the fire signs this person also in their youth and i say in their youth because they might be older now but you do you it could equally be a sibling or something but they may have had i'm not going to put it delicately actually they may have had a hoe phase or they may have been particularly popular with the opposite sex and you may have had a very different set of sexual experiences to them which again influences your decisions your caution around relationships etc for you it may be a huge deal to find someone with whom you feel truly compatible enough to kind of settle down in a more established way whatever that means to you right whatever level of commitment you're comfortable with here and now because you maybe struggle to find people that you connect with on that deep level and I feel that in this person's past their experiences um that people not are interchangeable because I don't think this is flippant exactly but that there will always be an available supply of more people if we're talking someone older, they could have had multiple marriages. If we're talking on the younger side, again, ho phase, or they may just be relatively flippant about the way that they conduct their own uh, romantic and sexual affairs and therefore dismissive about the way that you operate in a way that they sort of accuse you of like, oh, well, you never really go for it because you know that you're not capable of sustaining it. Whereas actually I feel what's going on here is you take your time with things a little bit more, you're perhaps, you know, you may have also had these kinds of experiences, but you've come to a place in your life where you know what it is you want to settle down with and for, and that's the product of experience, and that's also the product of kind of deep thinking on your part, you know, this swords in the upright, you've really contemplated what it is that you want from a relationship or an equal partnership, um, whether it's, you know, monog or poly or whatever. And this has been a slow decision for you. So, of course, you might have settled a little later or you might be stepping into this at a time that seems counterintuitive to other people. My feeling is, actually, it's exactly the right time to be thinking of these things because Venus wouldn't be showing up for you if it wasn't. But this person, I think, where they're flippant, they want you to be just as flippant. And where they're stuck in certain traditional ways to do things, they want to impose that um, tradition onto you. Partly because also the Queen of Wands energy is very... Um, she likes to feel her freedom. And if she feels that somebody else is getting freedoms that she perhaps hasn't had access to, then that rubs her up the wrong way. And she can be a bit feisty right to put it kindly <laughs> um and then we have the ten of cups again in reverse so again it's this like 
can you receive your happy ending can you do whatever your version of the white picket fence scenario is be that you know very sort of fancy free and free for anything fancy with multiple partners throughout life or be it the kind of you know fixed house 2.4 children and everything is done in a certain way we have a broad spectrum on this channel between one thing and the other thing but what I'm seeing is that whatever the dream was for you, it's like you're not allowing yourself a daydream. And this character is looking exactly at that card in the sort of prohibition of that process, right? It's like you don't get as far as dreaming about it because the first emphasis is on logic and material security. And it's like, well, you won't be able to afford a house or you won't be able to do this job for it. Or um, how could you possibly organise your way through a date when you can't turn up on time, etc., etc., etc. All these kinds of things that, like, yes, we want these um, high functioning skills within a relationship, but it doesn't require those skills for somebody to love you properly and deeply and mutually as well you know it it doesn't require you to be for instance financially stable for you to make a huge difference to somebody else's life by loving them and this is something that's a bit societally lost at the minute I think because we have so much of a focus on material success and things that we can show off on Instagram and all the rest of it we sort of forget that what some people long for the most it's just to be really cared about on a deep level and that they don't care much always what car you drive, what job you have, um, how late in life you came to certain things in order for you to love them effectively. You know, love kind of sees through those things in the end. And whilst, yes, it might be good to go at a certain pace and it might be good to pick out people who are compatible with you in lifestyle and who you can see a secure um, collaboration with in terms of finances, you know, a responsible individual to an equal level that you are. These things aren't the makings of love, right? These things are all additional. You see this kind of pentacle shaped moon in the background, or is it the planet Venus? I don't know. But then the, the Venus Aphrodite figure is in the foreground. So this is a reminder to me of all that stuff is well and good. And this person may have a point to an extent that it's good to have a certain skill set or setup before you enter a more serious relationship. But at the end of the day, you may be entering it with somebody whose chief demand from you is just that you love them really well and that you continue to be yourself because that they, they appreciate that right and they're the kind of unspoken voice in this reading so maybe let's hear from them right whether or not you've met them yet what do they think to all this yeah see the the rose is spinning out of control there and I actually feel that this is this person at the other end saying I don't need for you to buy me flowers every week I don't need for the fancy shit to happen in a way that this potential family member is suggesting right you don't need to go about courting to use the traditional term in the way that everyone else has always gone about it if you are deeply loving right this was in reverse was it yeah seven of pentacles in reverse so there is a, a kind of pushing forward from the person who you would do this with or at least an anchor partner if you're poly where they're stating that they don't really think you're evaluating the situation in the correct way. Remember, the Seven of Pentacles is about assessment, reassessment, thinking things through. Um, and I'm now hearing the, uh, oh, what are they called? Come on, brain. The band who did Dry the Rain, Beta Band, I'm hearing assessment, so I'll link that down below if I remember. Because um, the video or the lyrics may be relevant further to like this person's vibe. And again, history, right, is in that video, um, or at least reenactment. So revision is is something here, not necessarily academically. That may hit, I don't know, but certainly looking over the situation in greater detail or with a greater, a broader context. In the same way that family are perhaps judging this based on whether they think you're ready to take the next step, or one particular person at least thinks you're ready and the rest are kind of convinced by that. I think that the person that you would take that step with is more sort of saying, have a more broad, expansive look at this because their chief concern is legacy, right? Is what comes in a few generations, what the 
what the ripple effect and impact on the world of this relationship will be, whether or not you actually want to have children, right? And if you take that into consideration above maybe what this person has said about your particular set of skills or your reliability or whatever it is that they want to frame it as, then what you have is, are we compatible? Are we going to do good as a power couple? And I think really the push from this card is, well, yeah, of course, because we really love each other, right? Um, and again, this could be a future spouse scenario or this could be somebody that you know here and now and this is what they think. We've also got an Ace of Swords in reverse that came up at the bottom of deck for this particular draw. So if this is someone you know in person, it might be something they feel they can't tell you because you are listening to family, because you do um, take all of this on board, particularly if you are in like a setup where the head of the family is a matriarch. For some of you, not all of you, that is the setup because you don't have a father figure present. And therefore, it's become even more important to you over time to listen to the matriarch. Or perhaps if this is like a grandmother figure or something like that, again, within the parental situation, there is, um, you know, there's not the other grandparents. So there's more of an emphasis on what this person says. But there's this strong vibe of a matriarch or a femme coming through that's kind of dictating how everybody in the family sees what is a viable relationship or what is allowed within the family unit. And the person that you would be in collaboration or connection with is saying, I don't feel that I can tell you to reflect on that because I don't have the standing of this figure, whoever they are to you. So mother, grandmother, sister, you do you, boo. And it may even be that it's not that they have the ultimate authority within the familial unit, but that they have authority within your friendship group, for example. So... I don't know, say you had a sister that was really good friends with your last partner or something like that. This might make your next partner feel incredibly uncomfortable about bringing up the fact that really your sister doesn't have to weigh in on this aspect of your life quite as hard. Or your mother doesn't or your grandmother or auntie or whatever doesn't. Um, for some of you, this is like raised by a village and there's just a strong feminine energy to that community in some way so I don't want to make generalizations that are possibly slightly homophobic but it's coming through that for one or two of you you may have two fathers but they may both be quite effeminate and again that's not always the case and as part of the LGB I don't want to assert that but in this case you know read um, this matriarch figure as perhaps one of those men um, as I say in the intro, gender really on this channel is kind of, um, it's very immaterial. It's very much about who is in the passive energy and who is in the more active energy. But you can be in a passive energy that is still in the energy of rulership. It's just that you're doing it by means of, in the light, the art of seduction type stuff and in the shadow, manipulation and covert type stuff, right? So this is somebody ruling over not just a family unit, but your decisions within that and convincing you either by gaslighting or by overt demands that it is not correct to go forward with the relationship you've chosen in the way that you're going to do it or that relationships in general are not correct for you because, you know, you're hopeless or something along those lines, which again, not true. But if the person you're planning this with is in your life, I think they feel very uncomfortable about this whole thing because it's potentially that they can see how this is affecting your decisions for some of you that's been going on a long time maybe seven years is relevant here um but they've never been able to assert themselves over your family for obvious reasons or your chosen family of people who perhaps had a redemptive quality in your life in order to say um actually i think this is bullshit or actually i really differ on this Something that's coming up is their family, which is this card. Okay, and we've got a four of wands again in reverse. So it's like, maybe this other person comes from familial instability as well. And that's another reason that they feel they can't contradict what is coming in from your family, um, whatever family means to you. Because it's almost like not only are they 
then in a kind of competition with a matriarch around you, but also their framework to come to that point is going to be questioned. So like the typical scenario is, oh, well, if so-and-so thinks they're so correct about this, what's the deal with their parents? Are they together? Are they divorced? You know, were they adopted? Um, do they have a living family? Um, do they have a functional family unit to draw upon? All of these kinds of things which make, I'm going to say your person, because it is somebody that you're sort of ending up with here, but it makes your person come off in a, a bad or unhealed or less than traditional light under these sorts of dynamics in a way that discredits their position to people like this who are very fixed about how things should be. Um, another example may be that if you're in like a religiously traditional family and there is an objection to you going out on your own with a specific person or within a specific sexuality and lifestyle because of that religious influence, um, then the person that we're speaking about here or predominantly may be somebody who is a religious or who follows spirituality, for instance, and has a lot of people sort of side eyeing that from, um, you know, Christian or Islamic or otherwise Abrahamic communities who don't always fully understand that that's not evil. Right. Or or that it's not immoral to, uh, for instance, work with spirit and that actually a lot of it is quite syncretic and, and was quite uh, heavily Abrahamic in some places at the same time, right? Which is a whole other kettle of fish. So where are we going forward with this? What is What would you suggest that the querent do about this situation? Let's get how to handle this familial figure, which was clearly that one. How to handle... Um, sort of going about this with a partner, like how to speak about this with the person that you may be planning it with, if, if you know them already, um, or when you meet them, right? And then death reverse. So it's like not wanting to step out of the situation is a big factor. You may feel that if you speak about this, you'll be literally estranged for many of you. Um, because this is a real resistance to something that is a natural cycle. Uh, my third question was going to be just kind of general advice, and I don't feel that's the death card, so we're going to take this one here. As I say, if you do like this deck and it is a beaut, please check out my A to Z lucky dip of Marseille minis because they've been going since the channel began, which means that the view count on those videos is particularly low considering how proud I am of those readings. Anyway, um, <laughs> okay, so we have a nine of wands, which I'm going to say is in the reverse. And then we have a three of pentacles in the upright. Well, that's good. And generally speaking, we have a nine of swords in the upright. Okay. So I'm going to go general first. And I'm going to say, don't lose your head over this, right? This is... Um, it's going to cause you no small amount of anxiety. You may be losing sleep. You may be having nightmares. There may be something to do with the materiality of this, the kind of housing setup, etc., that is causing you anguish to percolate on, worry about, etc. If you're not a subscriber, um, I do suggest it because I do money readings every so often and this may come up again. A lot of the readings I've done since my kind of triumphant return here have been follow-ons from each other or interweaving somehow. So that may help in terms of just making those concrete material decisions in the coming weeks. Um, it's not an obligation, obviously, it's just a suggestion. But I think if you have been having trouble at night, maybe think on this reading in a broader way and try to take your partner's advice of having that more bird's eye view viewpoint of how this is going to go. Because as I said before, the worry here isn't actually your capability, your current financial setup, or even your trajectory in terms of your finances. The worry is more about what kind of a legacy is this partnership going to have? Something else I will say on that is that um, it's good for you, for your self-concept, for your self-esteem, and therefore for your confidence and presence as a partner to be in um, 
a good mindset around where your finances are, right? Or to be in a good place around the decisions that you've made financially, educationally and in a concrete way. So if part of the reason that this sort of stuff from this person or this unit is hitting hard is that actually you you sort of agree with some of it on some level, you know, you wish that you had got your education when the time was right or you wish you had taken that job or moved here or whatever, something that might further your relationship situation quicker is to really take, again, a bird's eye view of what can you do over, say, a 10-year or a five-year plan to get to the point where you can achieve those things. And I say that as somebody who has used a bit of ancestral help and a lot of kind of material grit to come out of a situation where I was down by thousands in court fees and rental payments from a hideous relationship and very quickly got myself in the position to finish my degree in my 30s um, and completely move cities by working my ass off. Um, admittedly, ancestral petition, which did work out in terms of a bit of additional money and just following, putting out there what I wanted, but surrendering how I was going to get there and following the guidance of spirit literally day to day on what would be the most beneficial for me to get to that point. And I thought that I would make it maybe in five years and I ended up moving really quickly after the pandemic. So it's doable, but part of the step towards it, particularly if you do believe in ancestral stuff, is to put the intention out there and to say, hey, this is the thing that I'm really worried about in terms of my personal legacy and how that's going to impact a partnership. These are the things that I would like to achieve within five years, within 10 years. I don't see how the money's going to come to that right now, but I surrender it to you, you know, to your guides, to your ancestors, your angels, your spirits, your demons, whatever it is you work with. No judgment on this channel. But there's a process being spoken about here of if you feel really anxious and sleepless, actually get up, start to journal about it, start to say, what your worst fears are about where you could be in five, ten years, about what your partner might think in those periods, about whether your family are actually right about you or whether it's fair that you are where you are and work through that to do fear setting. And I'll, I'll put a useful link down below regarding that to work out what your goals are kind of in the reverse from your fears, because sometimes the, the only solution for quelling this kind of anxiety is not just to take little proactive steps in the direction we've already been moving, but to fully acknowledge what the shadow of this is, fully acknowledge why is it that you feel it would be catastrophic to go forward with this in this familial unit. Um, maybe your fear actually isn't about your own decisions and, and set up, and maybe you're okay financially, but your worst fear is that um, your family will reject you or estrange you or something like that if you go forward with this. Again, that is something you can do fear setting for because if you can talk about the worst way this argument would blow up, then you can kind of work backwards in terms of, for want of a better expression, buttering your family up to a certain scenario really slowly over time and revealing truths very slowly over time, particularly if you have been stalked in a way that, emphasizes the reasons your family could be proud of you and could see that you're really responsible at decision making before it is that they get various hits of things that they would consider abhorrent or things that they would be shocked by right so there's this emphasis on a process of working backwards of fear setting of goal setting based around what you feel are your perhaps missteps, but also like a real reckoning with, well, how much of that perception of missteps is real and how much is just coming from this other person or these other people based on paradigms which are frankly very outdated. And again, if you resonate with that, go to the recent reading on um, this being needs you to be present here and now or something like that. Um, I believe I tagged... 7475 in the title as well or in the description anyway it's that one because it does discuss 
breaking away from familial legacies that aren't so great in terms of ideas that are outdated, boomerisms, you know, um, not to come for anybody, but um, things that just aren't relevant to the opportunity levels now in quite the same way. Okay, so stepping away from that, um, we have how to handle your family member first. And it was the nine of wands in reverse. I think really this is a call to treat them with compassion and recognise that some of these fears they have that they've perhaps projected onto you are a result of their own wounding. So quite often if you have people who are um, extremely discriminatory because they were raised in environments of religious fervour, then those environments themselves have had a negative impact on that person as a child. And they were led to believe if they thought any other way, that either other people would physically punish them or God would smite them down, right? And they would be evil and they would be terrible. So part of this process of um, sort of backtracking, surveying, rectification with this person, fear setting from the familial is perhaps to have very honest conversations with whoever this leader person is about what their childhood was like, what their beliefs about relationships were like why it is that they felt the decisions that they made along the way were the correct ones, um, what it is that they would fear for in terms of you and maybe even your siblings going forward, and basically why they came to their position, so that you can not only have compassion for it and for them as a person and not feel quite as kind of downtrodden by it, but also so that you have a framework then of how to soothe those specific fears. If it was a case of they were given physical punishment if they didn't, I don't know, have this kind of a job because of the time that they grew up, then perhaps it's a good time to emphasise the fact that you appreciate that they never physically punished you or the fact that there is no danger. Uh, sorry if you can hear my phone buzzing. It's unfortunately a notification I can't turn off. Um, okay. Okay. Wow, that is just a sec. Sorry about that, gang. I really hope that recorded because um, I put it on pause and then had to open another window just to turn that off. But again, incessant contact is a theme, right? You will answer me. You will answer me. And I had my phone on flight mode, but it was a notification doing the same thing. So if you feel harangued, this is just confirmation, right? Um, but yeah, if, if there was a threat of punishment emphasising that you're glad that they didn't quite have the same attitude to you as their parents did to them. Um, or if this is like the threat of a divine being, perhaps being punitive or something like that, then having discussions about belief and about how certain denominations of similar nowadays don't see that spirit or that God as being quite as punitive or as quite as hard-lined or that there is, you know, shades of grey in the text. This is your chance, by the way, if you're from a mega religious family, to impress this person with your knowledge of whatever their sacred tome is or whatever their traditions are. But again, it's kind of a mutual thing of understanding where they're coming from, being compassionate for it, but also understanding it enough to counter it for perhaps the first time. And it's non-combative because it's this warlike recovery energy in the reverse. But it's also saying that it's coming from a place of strength, right? If this person has the ability to be a warrior, but they're putting down the ones in order to recover from their injury, right? And that describes you and this queen of wands. Um, and then finally coming to like how you'll deal with this with your potential person or specific person. The three of coins is just collaboration, financial and otherwise. So... Firstly, there is a suggestion that on actually talking about these issues in a real way to kind of, you know, maybe bring it up with them because they can't be the first person to go to this Ace of Swords. Um, it will be a collaborative effort. It will be, well, how can we work together to counter these beliefs or these traditions or to get ourselves out of a financial rut in combined fashion, you know, Um and then the other aspect of that is that this person has their own set of material circumstances, decisions they've made, ways that they've set themselves up for the future. And actually the indication with this card is that might weigh into your plans in a really positive way. 
when you're making these plans at night when you feel anxious or whatever and when you are goal setting and fear setting I don't want you to presume that anybody else is going to give you anything right I want this to be a plan that gets you back to being happy with yourself without any kind of help from the outside in that sense excuse me hiccups confirmation partly because I just believe that's the best way to go about it right that's it's kind of um from experience it's what you should do right because I I did make some plans at one point that were sort of one foot into somebody else being involved and maybe that ameliorating some of the extremities of circumstance and then that fell through completely and I really kicked myself but the plans where I was happiest were things with my education with general housing with this business etc um that I'd made completely by myself and that I'd fought to maintain for myself including in a secret way right you'll notice that there's no social media attached to this channel and that's because I've very much been through similar with this right um but there is that thing of don't take it for granted that this person will be materially involved but my feeling is that they might so if you've planned to for instance pay your own rent a certain way for the next few years while you get another qualification or something then something that may be coming in for you, which you shouldn't plan for, but could anticipate, right, in your manifestations, is that this partner may want to split rent with you. So then your your goals are met quicker because you've just halved the cost of what you would have been paying out. It's a very vague example, but you get the gist, right? It's like, plan for this to just be you and plan to pull yourself out of this kind of mire of potential insecurity around self-concept where material gain is concerned but also allow your plans to be intercepted by a benevolent universe there may be something like that coming in if you identify with that or otherwise this may be just like this partner coming in and saying hey should we go halves on even like a small scale like should we go halves on this date this meal shall we both pay for this holiday even though it's my birthday shall we both do this and that kind of alleviating some of the harsher stuff you had to plan for so like make plans for the worst case but allow other things to come in in a really lovely way something else I feel pulled to say um I won't link him but if you've heard of Dylan James and you're not familiar with him um or you're sort of tentatively deciding whether to do that sort of manifestation stuff he's really good for tapes that you leave on overnight I say tapes the YouTube videos that reprogram what you believe about your own access to money your own access to uh, living situation your own uh, availability for love your attachment style all sorts of things in terms of just having something on sleep headphones and reprogramming your brain overnight um, in order to Find that when you have negative thoughts, your automatic response thoughts to that tend to be of more positive beliefs. And whatever you believe about manifestation, law of attraction, magic, etc., you do you. But there is psychological merit and proof to this idea that repeated mantras while you're sleeping actually does reprogram you to a certain extent in what you believe you're capable of. Um, so doing some of his stuff for success or for financial gain or progress with work could be really helpful for some of you. Right, I'm really hoping that earlier portion did record, but I'm going to clear these away as if everything is fine to create that reality. <laughs> and we're going to go on to the second portion of your reading, which very excitingly is Ancestral Bibliomancy. So to counter any family eggs we've had, we're going to tune in with the good eggs of my family, uh, make them a little offering and uh, just take a, a leaf out of their books in a very literal way, right? So with this candle, I am calling in help from Pauline and Annie specifically, but also any of my ancestors who want me to know something specific for this collective in this reading. And I'm also going to offer this not sponsored, not branded, wonderful rhubarb fizzy drink as a token of my appreciation, which will later go on my ancestral altar. And there we go. 
that reminds me actually in terms of the spicy divination method each time if you want a reading of like bubbles in drinks i can do that let me know in the comments that that's something you're interested in it wouldn't be for a while because i've kind of pre-programmed my selection in order to get everything done but um yeah it's one i had a thought of and uh, maybe it will work for us okay so sorry about that noise that was squeaking wires and books so there may be something here about technology um my initial feeling on that is if you have a family unit who are more old-fashioned perhaps more um sensitive on the computer etc <laughs> then if you have a job in like tech, software, etc., um, they may not fully understand how successful you can be with that. So some of their anxieties about you settling down may be more to do with them just not understanding that stuff themselves, right? And projecting a little bit. Anyway, let's get to it. Our first ancestor today is going to be Pauline, who you can see depicted with this extremely dashing goth 13 year old right here who you may or may not recognize depending on your history with the channel um but pauline is a wonderful spirit she actually passed october of last year which some of you do know and this is her treasury of the sacred heart which she was gifted in school in 1939 as you can see just there i don't know whether that's in focus but i don't want to burn it there we go um, so, we're going to take the bookmark out of it first, and Pauline, what would you like this group to know in terms of bibliomancy? We're going to get three quotes. Okay. The first quote is, O oh my good God, who didst love me before I could love thee, and did apply my soul the merits of Jesus Christ when I was unable to implore that favour. Wow, there's a lot in that. Okay. Um, if you're allergic to Christianity, by the way, I am going to translate. So just hold out on this one because it happens that I came from some of the family being Christian, but it doesn't mean that you have to be um, of that ilk, right? So, who didst love me before I could love thee strikes me as like one of the ways to understand this family member is a feeling from them of, I came first, right? And if that does ring true for you, it may have been something that was obvious in previous relationships. So, for example, if you are, um, I don't know, a male who has a very close relationship with one's mother, you may have seen uh, just suggestions in your last relationship that there was a bit of competitiveness between your mother and your uh, girlfriend or boyfriend, right? And that there's kind of a a sense of... I don't dislike you, but are you good enough for my son? There's that kind of weird... I was actually in a really horrible relationship once where this was a, a step-parent... Uh, sorry, not a step-parent, a biological parent dynamic, and it honestly felt like she wanted to sleep with him more than I did. But anyway, that's I completely digress. That's probably not you and TMI and all of that, but, um, you know, it's quite a common thing for people to experience where it's almost like a parent is competing with a future spouse or a potential partner for their attention. And it's not necessarily like my horrible experience there where it is sexualized and it is a bit creepy. It can just be this feeling from a parent that I've spent however many years with this child, raising them, nurturing them, teaching them the ways of the world. And I am not yet ready for them to fly the nest or to let go of them. And you can see the flame jumping there. So Pauline's agreeing with my interpretation on that. Wicked. Um, but there's this sense of like, it, it's not a competition in a kind of get out of the way I want them for myself. So much as it's a competition in terms of, I'm not sure I'm ready to let this person go from the familial unit that they were born into or raised into. And therefore, I'm going to be antagonistic to any new partner or any setup that may enable a future partnership because that keeps them where they are, as in like around me or us. OK, so there's something going on with that and that can help you to understand it from a place of compassion, because when you think about it, when you do raise a kid for that long, it's natural to not want to suddenly never see them or suddenly feel like you've been sort of usurped as the key figure in their life. 
And yes, it's natural for children to fly the nest and move on, particularly in adulthood. But I think we can all have a bit of compassion for that scenario, right? That that parents are naturally going to hold anxieties for the future of their children in what is sort of psychologically like a surrogate bond that they move to to replace the parents. Think of folk tales where you have the beginning of the story is like the death of the mother or the father so that some other figure in the folktale can be a, a sort of stand-in for a more mature familial setup or unit, right? Quite often um, you have, you know, the vasilissa of the tale or whatever, having the mother or father die so that they can tune into their own intuition via the doll or marry into an equal amount of security in a more mature way at the end of the story, if that makes sense. So there's that going on. And then who did apply to my soul the merits of, and I'm going to say religion here instead of JC, when I was unable to implore that favour. So if this is a religious thing, this person feels they've done you a great favour by teaching you about what they consider to be holy. And they consider it disrespectful for you to disagree with those feelings, even if by all rights, um, including basic human rights, you can autonomously disagree with their opinion and that is fine and correct and even preferable from a developmental and evolutionary standpoint right we want people to advance ideas even if you stay within the same sort of traditions or religions or whatever it's more ideal for you to expand upon those <coughs> Excuse me, guys, I had to cut a coughing fit there. They really don't want me to get this out. I'm just going to take a drink. Oh, sorry about that. This this figure, whoever they are, really has resistance to this. Um, or to what I'm about to say, which is it's normal and natural for us to expand concepts within religion, deepen them with what we know of things like science or things like other religions or alternative paths and therefore come into more direct union with religious concepts as a result of you know history developing humanity developing as we move forward and some generations see that as a complete threat to the correct way to do the old religions particularly if they've been indoctrinated themselves and particularly if that's been in a punitive or physically, you know, corporal punishment kind of a way. Um, but it is, I believe, part of our evolution as a species. And I'm sure on a channel like this, you might agree, right? Because you are clearly open to spiritual concepts. Again, they're trying to make me cough so they're not. <laughs> Crikey, that was a lot. I mean, they really have a lot of force. Um, if any of you have been experiencing like things you interpret as psychic attack or evil eye or anything like that again it's for a minority but that may even be this person or, or this family unit kind of projecting their judgment in a way that they don't know takes that material turn so if you resonated with the last reading and my info there on kind of psychic hygiene psychic protection please do follow those steps if you didn't see that one it's towards the end of the reading that i mentioned that stuff um okay let's have our second quote from pauline that one was very dense with information thank you kindly my lovely okay and this is lamb of god who taketh away the sins of the world let me not be excluded from a share in thy universal mercies um, there may also be a feeling from this person that they want in and that may be kind of um, in the sense of the swords card where they were stalking you a, a teensy bit online or wherever um, but it may also be a sense that an additional fear for you about setting up perhaps in a place in a definitive way or having a family in a definitive way or whatever Maybe the extent to which this person or group feel entitled to involvement based on their relationship to you. Now, what do I mean by that? Some of us have had to move completely across the country in order that certain family members don't turn up to our houses when they know we are working. <laughs> and those people, I'm sure, will remain nameless and identityless and I couldn't possibly relate. 
um, others of us <laughs> may have had situations involving a family member stalking them with these kind of truisms or corrections of what should be happening. And that, bless her, Pauline was a good one for, for little corrections, very benign ones. But, um, you know, feeling that they know the correct way for you to live and then sort of intruding on things in a way that is actively not consented to. So if you resonated with the example of them turning up at your house, another example, which I couldn't possibly personally relate to, might be that when you say you are out for the day, they turn up at your house to speak to your partner and are very surprised when you answer the door. <laughs> Again, can't relate, right? Um, but see other readings for my tangled experience. Um, Another way that this might go on is you might be in a place with a partner where you're thinking about having children or having a fur baby or something like that and you feel that because they are family or because they are kind of kin in the more extended sense, this person might want to um, be helpful and come round and do childcare and, and sort of buy things for the baby or the dog or whatever in a way that actually you wouldn't find helpful, you would find actively inhibitive or perhaps for a minority of you, maybe even harmful to that child or creature or whatever because of the way that you know you were raised and because of the sorts of beliefs and things that might be passed on, right? Particularly in your absence, if you are the sort of person who would say... Um, send a child to their grandparents for the weekend so that you're able to have a holiday with your partner. You may have anxieties around, okay, but during that time, what is that parent going to say? Or what is that auntie going to do? Or what is that sister going to insinuate about the partner or the setup or the beliefs or whatever? So there's very real concerns about that stuff. Um, and sort of let me not be excluded. Let me not be left out. If you're going to go ahead with this, let me be super involved to the extent that actually it may not be a great thing. I'm just going to move this over here because I'm realising that the heat was directly below the phone and I don't want us to heat up and die off. Um, okay, last one for Pauline. The exercise of the way of the cross represents the painful journey of JC carrying his cross on his shoulders to die on Calvary for love of us. There is an extent to which this person is playing martyr, right? <laughs> this is um, somebody saying, I crucified myself for you. The response to which, particularly because this is a picture of me as a teenager, right? The response to their sort of, oh, and the woes I've had to deal with in raising you and this is how you repay me, may actually be a kind of very teenage, well, I didn't ask to be born. <laughs> or, or at least a sentiment... Uh, more delicately put, of uh, my brother or sister in Christ, if you didn't want the uh, repercussions and responsibilities of having a family, perhaps it was your choice not to have one, right? Um, and I'm going back to a, a quote that I said in one of those recent readings, which is, all children deserve parents, not all parents deserve children, right? So, Again, gentle reminder that anybody making you feel guilty for existing um, and, and sort of martyring themselves based on sacrifices they've made to do the very normal thing of having a family may have been the sort of person who didn't quite consider the repercussions and responsibilities of having a family before they had one. And that's not on you, nor is it on your prospective partner or partners, right? Spirit wants you to be very aware of this. Pauline, um, who herself was around quite a few martyring types, wants you to be well aware of this. Thank you kindly, Pauline. That was a lovely set of input. Right, now, let's go more, perhaps more excitingly, sorry, not as a person, but more excitingly for the channel. Let's go further back in time. This is Annie Coates. I'm not going to say how we're related for security reasons. But I'd like you to take a good look at Annie and ask her to help you out. I love working with Annie. Um, if any of you have been in my readings recently where there's been kind of relatively rude stuff, saucy stuff said, and then ancestors falling about cackling, you know, almost kind of dropping to the floor with all the skirts waving, 
that's Annie most of the time, right? I didn't know her in person, um, but I feel privileged to know her now and also to hear stories about how she was, which confirm the things I've experienced. And again, Annie Coates was gifted two books, actually. So we're going to take one little excerpt from each, a common prayer and a hymnal. And you can see that these were given to her by somebody in 1913. Very exciting again. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to take another drink. I can feel it coming, gang. I'm going to give unpopular advice again. <laughs> um, another interesting side note on this. I am not speculating on Annie's sexuality when I make this reference, but this was gifted from a Miss Annie Helm to a Miss Annie Coates with best love in 1913. And this may well have been an innocent girl to girl friendship during school or whatever. But another representation of dialogue like that between women is that in 1913, if one had a very dear companion, a letter writing friend, a roommate even, um, that would have been the level of formality that had to be undertaken. So for some of you, um, same sex or same gender connections, whichever you resonate with, might be relevant here. Um, and for others of you, there is something to do with a judgmental family unit presuming that somebody is gay or will fall into gayness as a result of their other heretical beliefs or will be around the gays. Heaven for friend. <laughs> Say that as a bye, right? Um, but there's just something sapphic going on here that comes through in that particular dedication. And again, I'm not saying that's who Annie was, but I think Annie would be prepared to chat about stuff like that. And it just is a vibe. So again, hit me up in the comments if you are in fact gay or if there's something along those lines being said by a highly amusing authoritarian figure. Um, we're going to go hymnal first. So Annie... Beautiful, wonderful Annie. What would you like us to know from this book for the reading? Oh, within thy clefts I love to hide when darkness o'er me closes. Saucy again. What did I say about Annie, man? <laughs> I love this cat. She's amazing. Um, okay, so there is like a oddly sexual energy coming through in a non-sexual way again. Um, apologies for any offence given or anything, but um, Annie would have been all right with it, I think. Um, there is something also here. I mean, obviously, within thy clefts, I love to hide. It's very like, that's possibly just a confirmation of a particularly lovely connection where you are hiding in a person's clefts, wherever they may be. <laughs> or they're hiding in yours. You do you. Have fun, guys. Um, but then also there's an idea of somebody hiding or only sort of going about things when darkness falls. So if you are a high-level magician and you resonated with the idea of magical attack, there may be something to that. But it is only for my people who've been practitioners for a good long time, who didn't start that way, dare I say, because of things like TikTok, and who maybe have a bit of that in the family. That's just your confirmation there. Um, no shade on TikTok. It's just that when I say established practitioners, it tends to be sort of longer than that's been around, right? Witch talk, witches of Instagram, etc. cetera. Um, and if it's not that, there is from this like stalking family member figure or like third party triangulated stalker, there is a sense of going about things after dark or hiding away. Maybe like, I don't want to say this for everybody, but for some of you, if you know your parents are problematic or your family is, there might be like fake accounts on your account. Um, and this is just your caution from Annie to maybe delete anybody or any incoming thing which is not like somebody you know in person and can verify or indeed to go silent around the people that you don't fully know so like I, I had a very similar experience to this right where I was being gang stalked at one point or another and then familiarly stalked at a different stage so I'm quite careful generally speaking with my personal socials um, which I'm not going to share here because they're not a a work thing um, about 
you know, only sharing really personal life details now that I've moved with people that I know I've met in person, even if I feel like some of the people that I haven't met in person but are still dear friends can see the rest of it. So it's not like, oh, I made that friend on this Discord or this Reddit or whatever and I want to keep them and now I'm going to have to delete them. That's not what I'm saying. It's more of a sense of, can you tailor your options to mean that they don't see everything just because you haven't fully verified yet that they're not like a catfishing account or something like that? I mean, less so on Discord, but you get what I mean, right? There's something shady here going on with somebody watching. Um, and that's a continuation of the detective work thing that we spoke about, as I say, in the last read. Um, but it's not from a partner this time. It's from a family member or someone affiliated with family. Okay, and from the common prayer, we have uh, part of John's gospel. So John may be a relevant name, as may Annie or Pauline. Um, These things I command you that you love one another. If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Um, I think this is another call to be compassionate with this person, no matter how kind of hateful or sly they may be about wanting to get a closer look at your relationships, wanting to get in your head about what your next decisions are, etc, etc. I don't actually feel that they are... I don't feel that they have bringing you down in some way in mind. I think that they're misguided. And I think that from the other info we got, this is a mixture of, I don't feel ready to let you go yet. And I'm threatened by you moving into a very adult scenario and also there is something culturally religiously financially or um sexuality based going on here that i can't agree with so i'm not letting you move forward and again that may be hateful behavior depending on what it is but it's not from hate from this person so i think we need to be kind about the idea that they did love you first and the idea that um, I'm hearing, <laughs> I'm hearing God is love in my head and I know that will irk some of you who aren't religious specifically, right? But the force is love. Whatever you believe I'm reading from or with is love. Take it to mean that. But the other thing that I'm getting is, um, my best mate's older brother, when we were in school, used to do um, religious studies at like a higher level, which some of us took, some of us didn't. I did take it in the end. Um, and in the exam, he gave those of us in the years below him a pro tip, which was that in a very religious Catholic school, we're talking nuns giving sex education here, um, a good way to pass the exam for the questions you didn't know was to just put the answer, because God loves us. <laughs> and that that would fit all kinds of circumstances and we all fell about and some of the some of us used it I didn't need to but some of us used it to great effect right because they sort of across the scope of a year they didn't realize that a couple of kids were doing this and lo and behold when people didn't remember this story or that story or what we thought about transubstantiation or whatever it was if they put because God loves us, they did get the mark. They might not have got the maximum mark, but this was, we're talking sort of late 90s, early 2000s. So it was pretty rudimentary um, curriculum and they did get a pass on that answer, right? And in a way, like it's it's both funny in the sense of like you can use that language to persuade a person who is very traditional or very religious or whatever and just sort of give a generic answer, your equivalent of because God loves us. But the other thing coming through with that is that he hit on a truism there, right? The answer to everything kind of is that God loves us in the end, or that the force flows through all things, or that whatever deity you choose to work with is operating in every object, place, person. Or even if you, you know, sort of... Um, if you worship yourself as Godhead or you elevate the self in a sort of more satanic fashion, then this is that elevation, that presence as the God of your own world exists within all circumstances. 
basically what I'm saying is this kid was right. He was a sneaky little shit, but he passed our exams and he was correct in his <laughs> religious assertion from a, a very non-religious figure, as I remember. I think he was quite atheist in a Catholic family. So there you go. That's something to end on is that at least with this family member, you can either say because God loves us or you can actually acknowledge that if you believe I'm reading from anything external here today, then that force is a benevolent one. It's a loving one. It's operating through my ancestors, through the friends who gifted them prayer books, you know, almost a century ago or, or over a century ago in, in this case. Um, and it is flowing through you, through your situation, just as it flows through the cards, through speech, through this candle, which you can put your intentions to, by the way, into, sorry. Um, and therefore, it can flow through these difficult conversations. It can flow through your anxieties about where you materially stand, about whether you do have it together, about how, excuse me, hiccups, confirmation again, about how balanced you are in your approach to things about whether you have life handled and it can flow through your compassion for yourself and for your partner and family if any of those things do feel lacking for circumstances beyond your collective control if you liked it please 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 hit like subscribe ding the dong thank you kindly check out the rest of the channel in the links in the description Check out any relevant links to this reading in the uh, comments box thing. Um, and I hope to see you again soon. Take care.